This is Kishimoto. Uh, I will spend about five minutes uh, to propose uh, some points for discussion. And um, there were some um, research uh, committee who have uh, studied activities in the first half of uh, last year, and uh, ultimately it published the book of Next Book Chain. And at that point in time, the um, a lot of interest was uh, drawn upon, for example, the fintech and the blockchains, and also uh, the um, cryptocurrency. And uh, we decided that the next round of blockchain should be uh, more prevalent in all kinds of industries. And uh, some are the legal experts who joined the board of committee and also we were able to have a, a person who are developing for example Stephen and Williams are here with us today and we were able to um, to invite them uh, to join the committee as well as Dr. Yano mentioned earlier regarding the outcome of the um, research um, panel, and he has shown the overall uh, points of the next blockchain. So I'd like to just um, summarize the four key points in this uh, research outcome. The first is, how can we create a data market? In Europe, the uh, GDPR, the rule for the uh, uh, personal information are uh, being um, implemented, and in order to make the data as an industry, uh, how we should uh, prepare um, for that. And uh, first issue is, of course, is data ownership, how to set the ownership of data. And the second is the token, be it uh, cryptocurrency, uh, how stringent it should be regulated. And there are some legal uh, issues as well. And of course, uh, all of these will deal with the uh, privacy related information. So we need to prepare for the legislation and legal system for that. But as Director General Nishiyama mentioned from METI, that uh, this is a, a still nascent stage. And therefore, we have to make sure that regulation will not delay the evolution of technology. But yet, we need to ensure the security and uh, the uh, high level of trust. And second point is regarding the autonomous driving. And we have uh, Mr. Kato from Toyota Corporation today. Well, think about auto autonomous driving alone, or be it sharing and services, or perhaps other services as well, where the uh, cars will be the device to collect all kinds of data, more so than mobile phones. And there will be a great contribution to the society. And uh, uh, Mr. St Stephen, you have uh, mentioned this particular topic in, uh, regarding Talaxa, and uh, there are so many applications uh, possible. And the third point is that uh, in the next book chain, we've thought about the algorithm in the three layers. The top layer is the crypto layer a token layer. And the second one is many applications. And the bottom is the protocol layer. And Fabian mentioned that uh, Ethereum is uh, the highest uh, one uh, used, uh, highest frequency used, um, uh, used one in the world. And learning from such examples and how protocol layer will be enriched. And uh, we are still in the midst of uh, development of a protocol layer. As protocol layer becomes richer, thicker, and rather than to rely on the regulations, we need to ensure the sec security and sense of safety uh, at the protocol levels. And uh, all the stakeholders uh, for the blockchain need to think about this area. And the fourth topic perspective is the expectations, expectations to Japan. We have heavily biased toward uh, the fintech in Japan, and uh, among our population of 100, 100 million, and how many people would be uh, quite versed in blockchain? Is that between 1,000 to 2,000? And the answer was an uh, even smaller number of people who are interested in blockchain. And yet, there are quite a good um, uh, number of engineers. And also, we have uh, strong attractiveness uh, in the uh, advanced market. And also, uh, the whole world was uh, uh, looking for um, Japan to develop the blockchain and cryptocurrency. Uh, so I hope that there are some uh, Japan way discussion, inclusive regulation as well. So that is a perspective for the discussion. Thank you very much. So as I said, uh 
You may not find any blockchain on my slides, but Wired celebrated the 25th anniversary last year, and uh, Wired was started in 1993 on the West Coast of the United States. It's a media. And uh, through technologies, tech magazines and tech uh, media, uh, people see us as. But that's not necessarily right. Uh, we are trying to, through technologies, uh, discuss how culture and society will change. So we call ourselves a lifestyle media. So we celebrated the 25th uh, anniversary last year, and uh, we had a very ceremonious occasion. I was there as well. A motto of Wired. I mean, we have abundance of information, and the extreme luxury, the ultimate luxury, is meaning and context. At the t 26 years ago, after commercial internet, uh, Wired was established uh, to look at the meaning and context because Wired has always uh, believed in the ultimate luxury of meaning and context. And blockchain, how can blockchain can equip meaning and context for our life and uh, culture. So that has always been the attitude of Wired. I joined uh, Wired in June last year, and I have been serving as the chief editor. And uh, we have uh, published uh, four editions, New Economy, Digital Being, and Middle World. Digital Wellbeing and Middle World. It's not that uh, we have uh, solid, separate uh, topics, but we have a thread connecting these uh, different topics. As Ms. Minister Hirai mentioned, uh, we have seen progress in digitalization, and we call, used to call it new economy in the 1990s. And the new economy, uh, since it's been 25 years, and we are now realizing uh, the new economy. And against this backdrop, uh, this is Mira World Digital Platform, the third major platform. The first is around the world, all the information by digitalizing information. Everyone can use uh, data on digital platforms. So this is information internet. And uh, we ha this has become very much familiar to all of us. The next, uh, human relationships. The human to human links uh, to with whom you had conversation yesterday. The links between human beings can be digitalized and to be put on the platform, and this can be used every, by everybody. And this is social network. And uh, SNS, social network, has become a part of our infrastructure. The third is mirror world. What will be digitalized under the mirror world? Everything which has not been digitalized will be digitalized. So the physical world itself will be digitalized, and the digital world will be put on the platform, machines, uh, people, Anyone can transact information on the platform. So that's the third platform. That's the mirror world. And digital well-being. Uh, with the progress of platform, we, the Wired, will not just be aiming at technologies, but uh, we are aiming at uh, realizing uh, well-being. And that's our ultimate goal. If we talk about uh, mirror world, uh, I believe uh, there are commonalities uh, with blockchain. So let me briefly talk about this uh, mirror world. And this is Tokyo Tower. And the digital twin can be produced, um, Kato-san of Toyota. Uh, manufacturing industry is at the forefront of digital twins. And digital twins, everything this world uh, can have a digital twin with overlaps. That's uh, the notion of mirror world. During the 1990s, David Garant uh, of computer science uh, came up with the notion of mirror world, and uh, everything uh, digitalized uh, can produce uh, another world on the screen. But this year, the founding editor, Kevin Kelly, focused on mirror world again. Augment reality by augment reality, we, for example, I mean, virtual reality, I'm sure you are all familiar with virtual reality. You can be into a different role, but augment reality is different. 
the reality that you uh, you have, uh, you can overlap. You have an overlay of virtual reality on top of a reality, and that's the world of Mila World. And this was written by Kevin. This is uh, Shibuya Station, and uh, you have another added layer of information. So it's a dot data. Uh, so a city is uh, comprised of uh, concrete and uh, and iron bars, but uh, construction data and all other data can be overlaid to be released to digital, which used to be only physical. And this is the underground of Shibuya with dotted data. <coughs> Keisuke Toyota, architect. This talks about the notion of common ground. You have a physical world, and you have digitalized the scanned world on top of it, and in between, how to overlay digital and physical, the common ground. To what extent you can have a common ground, he says, will be a key or a major challenge to build a third platform. What kind of common language, lingua franca, can we have? And I believe that is a part of, that that, that has blockchain as a part of our discourse. And this is a, a short video on common ground. This is human. And there is a physical world and a digital agent, robots and uh, autonomous uh, drive agent or AR. Avatar, through digital media, you can recognize the world, digital agent finds it difficult to recognize the physical world based on the assumption for the digital agent to recognize the real world. I mean, they have lip center and map information, and they, they try different ways to recognize and read. And uh, no matter what methodologies they use, unless we come up with a situation where a digital agent can recognize what we recognize physically, so uh, the information uh, on top of uh, physical uh, will be seen as will be t deemed as a common ground, and how to build a common ground will be a key challenge going forward. Adding physical with information and adding human and information. Uh, we did uh, digitalize processing of Mr. Toyota. So uh, how to build a common world, I believe, uh, will be the key to see a progress in mirror world. And uh, AR3 brothers, Tomu Kawada, one of the three AR brothers, and uh, he talks about four different stages. We are in 2019, and uh, uh, we have seen almost 15% uh, in terms of the middle world uh, progress. And when the middle world progress is to 50%, smart uh, appliances, IOTs uh, will arrive. If uh, it becomes 100%, then the city as a whole will become a middle world or tourist tourism, for example, he says, if you go to Kiyomizu Temple, and if you're impressed, then you will be able to bring a Kiyomizu to your own garden and to enjoy the view. If it's uh, installed by 1,000% uh, and uh, can be cultural scale, and uh, you will be able to perform some of the uh, sports games in the Shibuya crossings, not in a stadium, and a uh, uh, civilization can be uh, ser uh, stored as a digital twin. If the climate change devastates the world, uh, the digital twin can be used. So these are all still in imagination, but this is the vision that we have for the future. And uh, I was uh, asked to give the first uh, presentation. Therefore, I thought it would be useful for me to share with a vision for the future. And the fourth edition is narrative and implementation. We are talking about digital well-being and middle world, how to implement uh, digital well-being in the middle world. That's why I've uh, chosen this uh, theme. At Wired, we say that uh, technology it precedes culture. 
what kind of culture will become available, what kind of lifestyle will be available. Other, uh, before we know that uh, imp uh, technologies uh, get implemented, these are the technologies that uh, are available. But uh, we have to make sure that we have philosophy, civilization, and, and we need to be able to think uh, what the civilization, what culture, and what lifestyles we are going to implement before we talk about technologies. That was my opening remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kato, and uh, pleasure to meet you. And today, I would like to talk about being a car maker. How are we going to capture the blockchain, and how are we going to think about the democratization of the uh, data and the network? And uh, I'd like to talk about uh, what is the implications. First, we are in the middle of the fourth industrial revolution, so we are in the midst of it. So. There are four enablers from technical point of view for the fourth industrial revolution, AI, blockchain, and autonomous driving. And right bottom is uh, the quantum computing. And what kinds of future should we um, project for the future? So, so far, how these technologies have evolved so far, and I just want to look back and think uh, for the future. The first regarding AI, that's what we call artificial intelligence, where the great momentum comes in 2006 when at the uh, Je Dr. Jeffrey Hinton of London have developed a neural net. They have applied the neural network into uh, the deep uh, learning, and uh, that is a very starting point. 10 years past and 2016, there's a excerpts from nature, uh, the Go games. Um, the computer have uh, uh, beat the champion of Go player. Right upper hand side, Satoshi Nakamoto, famous paper that was published in 2008 or 2009. So the Bitcoin evolution uh, since then that you probably are aware of. And autonomous driving, at the same time, around 2005 or seven, DARPA of the United States uh, have uh, engaged this uh, uh, challenge from uh, the Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Uh, there is a grand challenge for the autonomous driving. So, and uh, Sebastian Solan won this competition. And Sebastian Solan was from Stanford University and he led the um, Stanford University and went to Google, and uh, he started to develop the autonomous uh, car in Google and to date. And uh, quantum computing is as well as where it was in, it was more recent, such as 2017, I would say. For example, qubit, that is the quantum computing bit, has become it used to be 5 or 10, but like it is 29 bits. And uh, in three years, 100 bits. And probably uh, 2030, um, it was uh, uh, 1,000 or so forth. So in that era, blockchain will no longer be viable because of the entrance of quantum computing. And there are some discussion about it. And there are three points that I would like to mention. The industry revolution that we are uh, working at this point, in the four main waves, as I introduced earlier, uh, industry revolution is ongoing. So for example, AI and quantum computing, autonomous uh, uh, car mobility as a service versus uh, the blockchain, there are technological interactions and uh, industrial revolution is currently ongoing. Now for such um, situation, what Japan should do and strategy is needed. And when you think about the global competitiveness, then we need to survive the industrial revolution uh, for, and uh, I'd like to talk about our strategy from now. Now, regarding the blockchain, probably you are well familiar with this uh, area, therefore, uh, needless to say, I believe. But uh, in at the time of 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto paper was published where the blockchain is just in one of the technologies for Bitcoin. However, nowadays, blockchain itself is the core for the trustless system. And one application of the blockchain is a Bitcoin. Application is, for example, crypto 
uh, currency and also uh, the security token offering and also end user for end users there are more services be available for example sharing or maybe the backend system for the company's uh, SCM, supply chain management, or PHR, HAR, or e-government for the government, and IoT, or personal data system, PDS. Such applications are um, now evolving. Now, being a, a hyperchain platform, hyperledger, the Ethereum, such um, the ledger is being created, and elemental technology is at the bottom. For example, the authentication, distributed ledger, or smart contract, these are uh, being um, built as the um, architecture or stack of the blockchain. Now, before going to the next topic, I'd like to just recap the current data-driven businesses. There are three categories of uh, emerging data-driven business. The first is Augment Core product. Your own product will be augmented by this technology, and that's the first segment. The second one is data-driven solutions, where you sell the data or you analyze data, and data scientists uh, will be quite active in this area. And the third one is ecosystem. The data transaction ecosystem is one example in this area where, to give you some examples, the thermostat company will be acquired by Google so that uh, it will, um, or virtual Google will go into the home or to the cards and the core product uh, is, go is enhanced by the blockchain. And the second example is the GE products or Siemens uh, MindSphere that uh, IoT platforms are being provided, and that will be the product itself. And the ecosystem is, for example, Skywise of uh, Airbus, which is that the aircraft data uh, is sold in the market. So aircraft market is what uh, Airbus Skywise. So these are the three categories. And what are the common denominator across the three? As is discussed for today, centralized system is something. And um, on the left-hand side, you have an aggregator of uh, the data they are aggregating data from the data generators and selling it to the consumers. And for the platform, all the participants will rely upon the platform to uh, understand the data. In both cases, these are centralized systems required for these to work. But recently, what is happening is the distributed models. For example, energy, media, healthcare, real estate, in all areas, the distributed models are being provided as a service, for example, by the startups. For instance, the platform, DAP platform, setting or buying energy or for media, uh, when you oppose the block and you will be rewar rewarded, for example, and DNA platform or real estate, for example, the real estate legal registration, that could be attained by the distributed ledger system. So these are provided as a service. Now, what about the automotive industry? In the automotive industry, there are so many applications that we could fully utilize blockchain. For example, in regard to the data exchange, we could sell the data related to cards. And there are several data exchange available. It is not completely blockchain based, but the data market is evolving as we speak. And a mouse uh, multiplied by mouse a blockchain, for example, peer-to-peer MOS service. For example, if you own a car, then your car could be made available for somebody else, completely unknown, uh, and you will earn tokens. So that's a P2P um, model and supply chain um, and a traceability that uh, these are the possible area for a blockchain to um, be fully utilized. This is regarding the auto motive data uh, market. This is a very busy chart. I will skip the detail, but 
there is a car company or maybe an individual where um, they are providing the data and the buyer uh, will uh, promise uh, the price and a blockchain or the uh, ledger uh, is uh, performing as a basis and uh, the transaction of the data becomes viable. But as is uh, mentioned earlier, Vivian, Steven, as you mentioned earlier, this is not straightforward as you can see. Both scalability need to be ensured and the blockchain's capability is limited somewhat at this point and how well such business will grow, that's another question. And also we are not quite seeing imminent that uh, such a market will uh, be developed soon, but uh, we are just looking forward to the future and we are preparing as we speak. And this is the course uh, theorem. This is, uh, I was reading the textbook re published by Dr. Yano and I just uh, used the excerpts from his book, but I'm not quite versed with uh, econ economics. So therefore, as Mr. Kishimura mentioned, who is the owner of the data? We are providing data to GAFA and we are providing data to uh, the automotive company. And uh, who should own the data? And course theorem itself uh, does not uh, give us an answer. However, it at least says that the ownership has to be defined well. So data is regarded as, as uh, precious as uh, uh, crude oil, and uh, once ownership is set rightly, and there will be transaction and there will be value. Now, I'd like to talk about the future blockchain. The left-hand side is the current blockchain, and right-hand side is the vision for the blockchain. So token-based economy is something that we need to expect to happen, and also data democratization, and also distributed data exchange uh, will serve as the marketplace. And uh, related to that, for example, mobility as a service uh, or uh, other elemental uh, technology uh, will be getting involved so that Society 5.0 is going to be built ultimately. So I hope that uh, towards Society 5.0, I would like to use uh, all kinds of uh, knowledge and technology with you, and we'd like to build the Japan for the future. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. This is Kano, uh, the um, president of um, uh, Japan Blockchain um, Association, and uh, I ha asked uh, to have uh, five minutes for the last summary of the session. And my name is Ayano. Uh, Kano of a representative director. And uh, there were several um, very important insights expressed by uh, uh, Dr. Yano in terms of the digital transformation. It is not IT that needs to be promoted, it's the digital that needs to be promoted. And implementation in the society is very important. That is a very important tip. And um, Japan has a most the most advanced legal system and in fact, under the FS8 uh, instruction, there were two runs of revisions of laws, and uh, STO was uh, defined under the law for the first time in the world. And that, ac according to the top personnel of uh, international organization, um, Japan is actually two years ahead of the others in terms of laws and regulations. And that is probably true. And as uh, Mr. Nishiyama mentioned, that uh, uh, governance, structure, it, governance structure is becoming a butch um, process. It is a time lag by adopting a short time frame and uh, you will achieve the real time process so that we can ultimately achieve the society 5.0. And in order to have a real time processes, all of the human involvement need to be eliminated. It is impossible if uh, manual work is retained. So um, inclusive of uh, uh, all the um, administration services and so forth, all of the services available in the society, uh, we believe that blockchain will serve a uh, important role in automation of the whole uh, process. I forgot to introduce myself. I am the chairman of JBA, and the slide, uh, this organization was prepared five years ago with me, myself, and other members. Um, we are trying to uh, make an organization for representing the cryptocurrency. However, uh, there are um, uh, JBA. BJCAB, who has won uh, that uh, certification, and therefore we are 
particular focus attention to the blockchain and we are uh, conducting our association. I am the co-founder and CEO of a Bitflyer. And also uh, there's another uh, organization called JCBA who is making policy uh, proposals uh, for the blockchain and also ISC. ISO, that uh, uh, blockchain definition and uh, definition of terminologies, where it is taking time, but it is uh, making progress. And also, we have a public and private sector uh, data utilization advancement uh, committee that uh, uh, former minister uh, Hirai has uh, started this uh, committee, and I'm involved in that effort as well. Well, there are some concerns of Alivala where um, there might be policy impact, uh, and that's what uh, usually people talk about, but uh, that's not my concern. Alivala would not be able to use for the policy, monetary policy purposes. In fact, there are just Alivala uh, are just a payment uh, mechanism where the same amount of um, money will be printed. So therefore, there are uh, the government-backed uh, currency be always be uh, issued uh, together with Libra. And therefore, uh, Libra is going to be the payment instruments in my own point of view. Next, I'd like to talk about the technology point of view. Blockchain is characterized by several aspects. And the first is immutability. And usually, I've been often asked that uh, data cannot be completely erased, and that is uh, immutability. And that is quite often cited, and that is a must. There are so many applications by using this particular function, but it will not be very interesting because deletion is impossible, and therefore you can have a proof of existence, and that is not very uh, interesting for the blank blockchain. And Byzantin, um system, where there are several nodes, and these are the dishonest nodes. If the node is lying, then yet we can achieve and attain the full, uh, the correct uh, finality. And that is a unique uh, character for the blockchain. So far, they were centralized server or the single controller. Once that is broken, uh, then a whole system doesn't work. That is a single point of failure. And uh, because the central party is controlling, and therefore, if you lose the leader, then the whole system failed to work. And therefore, uh, there is no single point of failure. And that is another character in the blockchain. Now, blockchain in this regard is characterized as such. However, next, I'd like to talk about the visions in regard to blockchain. Here is what I envision as blockchain. First, internet provided the uh, easy replication of the information. Data can be replicated, copied quite easily over the internet. So far, we need to print uh, in book or in paper. So it is very cumbersome, but anyone, anywhere can dispatch information. And uh, the consumer being a receiver of information via broadcasting, I will also become the producer of information. So people started to use Google it. And um, you need to first Google before ask um, a question to others. And blockchain is called as an internet of value. And that is the strength of blockchain. First, the uh, copy replication of value is now impossible. Over the internet, the copying of value was uh, becoming possible, although it was only available in a closed world and uh, 10 times of copies and so forth, and it is a uh, um, cats and mouth um, competition because it is uh, using encryption and blockchain doesn't allow the copying of a value. If it is uh, available for copy and the Bitcoin's uh, value will go down to zero immediately. And over the internet, we achieved the um, prohibition of copy. And also, it is very easy to transfer the value. For example, let's say that uh, denomination such as Japanese yen and CBDC, by calling them as CBDC, then maybe we can send the um, payment to the others. And the Libra is trying to achieve this. But that data is just a sequence numbers. And uh, in outside world, there has to be some credential to be given under a certain legal systems and a CBD, CBDB will be immediately achieved. And 
once that uh, transfer of value is become available, then it will be applicable to stocks and the securities and all of the assets with value could be transferable to the others. And also the one unit of um, uh, transfer uh, could be very small. So small sensor dispatching a data that could be sold at one yen per data or uh, purchased by one yen of the data. So micropayment is become a possible solution for blockchain. And uh, more recently, what I pay particular attention to is that if there's nothing in the central control, there are some uh, trusted uh, transaction and the trust could be in sequential. For example, the minor card uh, issued by a small country or maybe uh, the uh, uh, the bank is issuing the bank uh, cards, and therefore that is uh, uh, trusted. And we always use our presumption to believe in something or trust something. However, uh, that will become the peer-to-peer, -peer where the chain of trust uh, could be trusted, or the data is trustworthy, or maybe that person is trustworthy. That world is going to be uh, achieved. So therefore, blockchain when we analyze its history, it is not just the um, money. However, it is applicable to data or all kinds of uh, uh, data. Now, lastly, I, what I want to communicate at the, the, the end is that um, since 2010, I come across with the uh, uh, cryptocurrency and I'm uh, watching over this industry. And what would be the next blockchain? And when I ask about that question, there is a killer contents, killer application be launched, and uh, we are in a position to create such things as well. But when we look at Japan, what blockchain have harvested so far is the mindsets of the people. The reason of this is that uh, so in the past, in 2014, the, uh, the um, famous um, Mount Cox is magic gaps magic the gathering that is a game card and the um the changing the sequence of the um letter is uh mount, Co mount uh, cox and uh it was just uh cards of uh, used in the games and uh, some of the users have uh, claimed that there is a value and there were probably dozens of uh, people who own such cards when i started a business and met with uh, many people a lot of people who doesn't understand the bitcoins and uh, there are some early adopters and enthusiasts and i talk with them and at the beginning the kinds of establishments per se are not interested in bitcoin at all and not uh, quite uh, trusted at all, and they don't understand blockchains or bitcoins as well. There were many criminal cases that had happened in Japan. However, at least Mt. Gox um, incident have drawn a lot of attention. And over five to six years, um, uh, as far as I can see, the participants the market uh, is quite different. And uh, serious people are uh, discussing. Libra, there are some pros and cons, and some are protagonists, some are uh, uh, rejecting the idea. However, at least the, all these people are serious about thinking about uh, the uh, cryptocurrency or the Libra. So that's the outcome that we were able to gain uh, in the recent years. Uh, the uh, blockchain or the cryptocurrency will never go back to the era where the uh, Bitcoin was only a uh, toy. So uh, I think that a blockchain has earned the mind and hearts of the people. So that's uh, what we have accomplished. So this is the Reiwa era, the first year. And therefore, we'd like to make a great uh, momentum for the blockchain and other Bitcoin. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.